In this video, I'm going to cover how we find the second derivative of a parametric function. Um, so, in other words, you know, how how do we find how do we find d squared y dx squared in parametric functions? And and this is a really important lesson because there's a little bit of a twist to it. Um, we already learned how to find dy dx. We find dy dx by doing dy dt over dx dt. And the big mistake that people have is they're like, oh, this will be really easy. I'll just take dy dx and just take the derivative again. Right? The issue is that I, I need, like when you look at this derivative, this is effectively saying we need to take the second derivative of y with respect to x twice. Like I need to take the derivative with respect, with respect to x twice. Right? And when working with parametric functions, they're, they're not with respect to x, they're actually with respect to t. And so the formula that we use to, to do this thing, to find this second derivative, is right here. Right? If you want to find the second derivative of something in parametric, you first find that first derivative, dy dx. You take the derivative of that with respect to t, and divide that by the derivative of x with respect to t. And this seems a little bit crazy. It seems like, why do, why do we have to go through all of this? And I, and I really want you guys to understand that, so I'm going to try and talk about it here, and then if necessary, we can discuss it further in class as well. The idea is, if I want the second derivative of y with respect to x, I can take dy dx, the rate of change of y with respect to x, and look at how that's going to change with respect to t, and then divide that by how x changes with respect to t. This dividing by dx dt allows me to change this with respect to t into a with respect to x. So if that makes any sense, great. If, if we need to talk about it more in class, we can. If nothing else, this is how we find a second derivative, you know, d squared to y dx squared for a parametric curve. So, you know, let's do a couple of examples. Um, I want to find this one, so I definitely want everybody to pause the video and work through how you would find this derivative. Um, you know, at least the first derivative. If you're up for trying the second derivative on your own, go for it. So for the first derivative, um, to find dy dx, I'm supposed to do dy dt, that's 3t squared minus 4t, all over dx dt, which is 2t. And I can actually simplify that a little bit further, right? If I if I simplify this, I'll actually get 3 halves t minus 2, because I can sort of split this into two separate fractions. So now that I have that thing, I can go at finding d squared y dx squared to find the second derivative, right? To find the second derivative, I'm supposed to do the derivative of this with respect to t, that's 3 halves, and then divide by dx dt, which is 2t. Okay. This is a little bit of a mess. I'll multiply top and bottom both by 2. That'll get me d squared y dx squared is 3 over 4t. And this is my second derivative of y with respect to x. Okay. So please, please, please remember that formula from the first page. Right. We need to be doing the derivative of the derivative with respect to t, then dividing by the derivative of x with respect to t. So another example of this, uh, this one, this time using trig functions, um, I'd like you guys to pause the video, try this one on your own, um, and then we'll work through it. So first of all, what's dy dx? Well, dy dx is uh, dy dt, which is cosine t, over dx dt, which is negative sine t. So if we wanted, we could simplify this into negative cotangent t. Then for the second derivative, d squared y dx squared, I'm going to have the derivative of this with respect to t, so the derivative of negative cotangent is cosecant squared t over dx dt, and it's actually kind of nice because dx dt is always just sitting down here, so I'm dividing by negative sine t. And we could try, I mean, like, we could leave the answer here. We could try and beautify this a little bit by putting it in terms of, you know, sine and cosine and things like that. So d squared y dx squared, let's see, your cosecant squared is 1 over sine squared. Oh yeah, so this will actually end up being 1 over sine cubed t. So we could write it that way. 
We could also write it as um, just negative cosecant cubed t. Any one of those things would work. So we, we now have three possible answers for this problem. Um, so that's how we find a second derivative. Um, the, the, the only other reminder that I would give here is that, remember, that the second derivative tells us about concavity. And we used to use concavity for things. Um, so, so that'll be coming up next in our discussion.